I'll admit, I'm not caught up with the Dream SMP, but I watched the finale that happened a few days ago, which is awesome, and at the end, Dream gets put in this prison that Awesome Dude describes as inescapable. Let's put him in the prison! It's impossible to get out once you're in. It's called Pandora's Vault, according to the wiki, which I didn't know could exist for a Minecraft server. And at the end of Tommy's stream, he said he was going to visit Dream in that prison the following day. I'll come visit him tomorrow, just me. Okay. When we come across the prison the next day, it's massive. The precautions Tommy had to go through to access Dream were crazy, but pretty well thought out. Oh, come on, man! When coming across the main area that housed Dream, we can see that his room is at the bottom of an obsidian pillar in the middle of a bigger room full of lava coming from the spencers on the ceiling, with even more lava on the ground. The most popular escape idea that I've seen coming from other people is an enderpearl stasis chamber, where you throw an enderpearl in the bubble column and it floats on top until something interferes with it, which would then teleport the host back to the pearl. You can set up a stasis chamber to go off after a certain amount of days by using this day counter that I came up with where the daylight sensor powers the dropper once every day, and when all the items are gone, the comparator turns off, which will close the trapdoor and cause the pearl to activate. Placing this contraption within the spawn chunks of the world will make it operational at all times. However, something that you may not have known is that ender pearls are not permanent. They can exist infinitely, but will despawn whenever the host dies. When Tommy went through the prison precautions, Awesome Dude killed him twice to make sure that he had no items on him. Given how Dream is the prisoner, I have no doubt that this was done to him as well. This renders ender pearl stasis chambers absolutely useless. So now we have to take a look at our resources within the cell. We have a chest full of book and quills, a lectern, a cauldron full of water, two blocks of glowstone, and a clock within an item frame. We can obtain all the blocks here except for the cauldron, since you need a pickaxe to get the item. The cauldron is filled with water, but when broken, the water breaks with the cauldron. But you'll want to keep the water in the cauldron for later. The only other thing in this room is the respawn system for the prisoner. But before exploring that, let's see what mining fatigue means for breaking obsidian with your fist. Mining Fatigue lowers your mining effectiveness along with your attack speed, and Mining Fatigue 3 is what Elder Guardians inflict on players within a 50 block range every minute. This level of Mining Fatigue decreases your mining speed by 99.73%. To give you an example of how much of a difference this makes, Carpet takes 0.15 seconds to mine normally with your hand, but with this level of Mining Fatigue, it takes around 56 seconds. This means that mining fatigue multiplies the original time it takes to mine something by 373.3 repeated. This is a consistent multiplier because glowstone takes three times as long as carpet to break normally, and the time it takes to mine with mining fatigue matches with what I calculated. Obsidian takes 250 seconds to mine with your hand, so if we multiply this by 373, we get 93,000 333 seconds. This is nearly 26 hours over a day to mine one obsidian. Netherite blocks are the same. Dream mentions he is given food while in the cell. They bring me food. So even if someone had the willpower to mine obsidian, the prison authorities can simply place the block back. Something else to consider is the cooldown of the Elder Guardian and your ability to use the lava to die quickly. Since the Elder Guardian reapplies its effect every minute, if you were to die and respawn after the effect is reapplied, you would have under a minute of no mining fatigue. This would let you mine any block that takes less than a minute to mine without fatigue, including everything in the cell besides the obsidian and netherite blocks. And since you get 2-4 to four glowstone dust when breaking glowstone, if you break both of the glowstone blocks, you can craft at least one block in result. And this brings me to my main escape plan, which involves the respawn system. The only thing keeping Dream within this cell is his spawn point, which uses an automatic system that pushes him into the chute immediately after he respawns. We can't really see how the system works since Tommy doesn't look up the chute during the process of the respawn, but we do hear a piston go off and a damage sound. I turn my volume up very high for both times this happens, and I don't hear any clicking of redstone components, which for example could be a pressure plate or tripwire hook. Those sounds can be heard up to 16 blocks away, so while it's possible that there are none of those being used, it's also completely possible that the system is higher up within the pillar, where those sounds would be out of the hearing range of players in the cell. 
The damage sound could be caused by fall damage, which would support this. But anyway, the only silent detection method I can think of is a string in front of an observer. When you stand in string, it makes a change like a tripwire does, just without any noise. Having an observer in front of it makes the observer give a pulse. When Tommy looks up to shoot, we can't see anything besides obsidian and a dispenser at the top, although we can't see what's on the backside since we don't get a good angle of it, and some of the blocks near the dispenser are very faint, but could still very well be obsidian. None of the blocks we see can be moved by pistons, so I have no idea how he gets in there. I also tried to see where Dream fell in the water to determine which side he was pushed from, but he alternates from one side to the other in these two respawns we see. He could be getting launched by slime, and since this is a server, there could be occasional desync between client and server, which can cause slime to push like a normal block, which would result in this alternation. The system used to get Dream back in the room is unknown right now, but the method of detection is what matters. If string is being used to detect respawning, you can look down fast enough and break the string that the observer uses to detect you before getting pushed off. This means that the next time you respawn, you will not get pushed down the chute. Now you're standing right next to your bed, but it's very possible that the bed is not exposed to you since the corners can be the only respawn spots available. But you can obstruct it by either placing a block in that corner or by breaking the block you stand on. When your bed is obstructed, you'll respawn at the world's spawn. This takes away your bed spawn too, meaning that even if your bed is unobstructed, you will not spawn there again. You can get a block in that corner by finding where the piston is and mining it, and pistons will drop as an item when mined by hand. Oh wait, that can happen. Just break the observer. Once that's done, you can just... Boom. There's another method you can use to get up the chute, but first I want to cover some weird things that happen during the stream. Like how Tommy receives mining fatigue minutes before even entering the prison, but that could just be command blocks used for this stream. The really weird thing is that Dream somehow avoids getting the mining fatigue effect after dying for the first 2 minutes and 14 seconds there is before his next death, where he then avoids it for 4 minutes and 17 seconds, which is 7 more seconds than time it takes to mine obsidian normally. We see Dream's name tag for the first time here, but when we meet him, he doesn't have the effect. He gets it later on, and from the time we see his name tag to when he gets the effect, nearly 11 minutes have passed. Both times that Dream actually gets the effect, Tommy doesn't hear the sound the Elder Guardian makes. Quite a long time. Tommy also loses the original effect while in the cell. Perhaps the Elder Guardians are outside of the cell's range. Another thing to note are the properties of the lectern. If you didn't know, when you flip a page in the lectern, it outputs a quick pulse of redstone. Since this can go through the block that it's on top of, maybe if this was placed somewhere in the prison, it would activate something, like the pistons that push the netherite blocks in the ground. Something I was also wondering is what would happen if Dream died and intentionally didn't respawn. This might spark a reaction that would give Dream an advantage. Now at the end of the day, Dream is the one who knows how this prison works more than anyone else besides Awesome Dude. I know about the prison, I know how it works, like, you're not, you can't contain me in the prison. The history behind the name Pandora's Vault relates to the Greek myth Pandora's Box, which basically means something that seems valuable but is actually a curse. I'm guessing the future events of the prison will match this description, and since this is the Dream SMP, Dream will escape or be let out at some point. If the method of detection isn't string, there's still a way you can get up the chute. There's this really cool video this speedrunner made, where they went up the lava without taking damage by logging in and out constantly, grabbing a bucket from a dispenser on the ceiling, and getting the water source to climb up the chute and place the chest at the spawn point. To add to this, remember that you can take the water out of a cauldron with a bucket if it's fully filled up, which it is when Tommy visits Dream. You can grab the water from the chute and the water from the cauldron and place those sources diagonally from each other. This will make an infinite water source. You can fill the chute with water and then bring a block up to obstruct the bed once you find the respawn point. This is a way better alternative to the building up method I described earlier. The only issue is the chat messages joining and leaving create. It could alarm the prison authorities. But since it takes so long for anyone to reach the cell because of how long it takes for the lava to drop down, you would probably have enough time. I also made this mapping in the cell room floor 
for where it's okay to place water without it messing up the lava, because bad things happen when that stuff turns to stone next to your cell. The yellow here means that you can place water here, but don't place them next to each other because it's gonna create a source and flow over to the lava. The only reason why placing one works is because water looks for the fastest way to go down. Since this is the closest hole, that's how that works. The basic rule of thumb, I guess, is if it's past this cauldron, then don't place it. It's still possible that this wouldn't work the same way it does depicted in this video because of the incorrect shoot, which is missing the dispenser and whatever else is up there. But because of how flexible water can be, it's much easier to get to the respawn system. And considering how awesome dude mentioned that the Elder Guardians are under the prison, combined with the possibility that the cell isn't even within the range of the Guardians, you might be able to avoid getting the effects by staying up at the chute, where you can then mine obsidian normally in only 4 minutes. So I had an idea for a completely unescapable prison that involves a cobble generating wall. So whenever you break it, the pistons that are on a clock push the blocks back into place. You can also have them go horizontally, all from one source, and you'd want a layer of obsidian underneath so that if you do break it, you will not go through. And I have an elder guardian here to make sure that no one can mine through it really fast. And it can keep people out because if you have obsidian as a shell around the room, anyone on the outside will probably not try to mine in because it will take hours. You'd want to do a kill check to make sure the prisoners don't have any items on them, or a stasis chamber, and of course, a little respawn system in case they do die somehow, which uses a puffer fish detection system. You would probably want to cover this area up a bit more so they can't jump over here and mess it up, but it's better than having a string here, and since I have nothing right here, I can use two blocks here so that there isn't a chance that you somehow go into crawl mode, because that happens sometimes. But since this is regenerating, if done right, it's completely impossible to get out of. So that brings us to the final question. Is the Dream SMP prison able to be broken out of? It depends.